if you think E to the X is special, E to the X is the little poster child for calculus, placed on a pedestal for being its own derivative, hence its own antiderivative as well. It's the apple of Newton's eye, not because it fell out of a tree onto his head, but rather because it's the only function which is its own derivative. Wait, there's more? You're telling me that there are infinitely many functions which are their own derivative? Uncountably many? What's uncountable? Uh, well, I've just been informed that any function, which is a constant multiple of the exponential function e to the x, is also its own derivative. Well, anyway, clearly the most natural is the constant zero function. So e to the x can take its little crown and shove it. <laughs> Alright. But seriously, mathematicians love e to the x because it's its own derivative. And that's why you should love it too. I mean, come on. e to the x prime equals e to the x. It doesn't get much easier than that. Essentially, the only thing you have to worry about is using the chain rule. For example, the derivative of e to the sine x is itself e to the sine x, but multiplied by the derivative of sine. You know, cosine x. And that's basically it. And then to go back up, that is, to integrate e to the f of x times f prime of x, you simply write down e to the f of x, and then add capital C. It doesn't get much easier than that. So you see, the exponential function is your best buddy in calculus. Its position on the throne is rightly earned. So get familiar with the e to the x. It won't bite. And we'll find that using e to the x makes the rest of calculus so much easier. Until we meet again, peace.